Do you like men? Do you like oiled up naked men? Do you like oiled up naked men fighting each other to the death? Well, you are in luck, because Records of Ragnarok provides you just that. Records of Ragnarok is a story entirely based around the greatest trope in storytelling, a tournament arc. You see, the gods deem humanity cringe and agree to eradicate us, but the Valkyries cannot let that happen, so they give the suggestion to start Ragnarok, a tournament between 13 of the strongest gods and 13 of the strongest humans, and if the humans win, they get to keep on existing. After hearing this suggestion, Zeus's reaction is pretty much what you would expect. You wish for us, the almighty gods, to fight against some mere humans? <laughs> no balls, no bitches, and you're bald. After getting their egos hurt, Zeus accepts Ragnarok, getting more excited than a My Hero Academia fan inside a children's playground. From there, you have a manga full of the hypest fights in manga history. It manages to take idiotic ideas, such as Nikola Tesla fighting Beelzebub and turns them into some of the rawest and most emotional fights in anime manga. As a half Greek myself, round 9 was the most beautiful yet tragic fight I have ever witnessed. Couple it with every fighter having a great backstory that manages to make them likable in just a chapter or two every fighter having time to shine under the spotlight, and most importantly, the author showing both fighters respect, even the Chinese ones, which is surprising, coming from a Japanese author. Record of Ragnarok has cemented itself as one of my favorites from the moment I first started reading it, which was at the very start of round 5. Even the 3 years younger me would agree with that statement, albeit while speaking at 100 miles per hour. Even back then, everyone knew that if this show gets a great anime adaptation, it would break the anime community. Hell, Adam vs Zeus would be enough by itself. The casual watcher wants to see cool fights, and this series was practically made to succeed. So, if Ufotable or Madhouse or God forbid MAPPA gets their hands on it, Record of Ragnarok would have most likely become a staple of fighting anime. So, with the announcement of the anime, the studio responsible for the adaptation is… Grafinica? Who? Looking at what they have done previously, I am going to be real, I have not heard of a single one of their previous projects. The trailer didn't look bad though, so there might be a chance for it to turn out alright. Wait. Netflix is the one who produces it? Okay, it's over. I was expecting it to be of subpar quality, yet I could have never foreseen what we would receive in the end. Remember how I said Adam vs Zeus would have been enough to break the internet? Well, it certainly managed to make an impression. How do you manage to make an animated adaptation that makes the manga look more alive in comparison? If your animation looks like a Jurginsta video, you know you messed up. Steel images, shaking a steel frame to convey impact, backstories that take infinitely longer than they should, pacing that managed to turn a two episode fight at most into four and a half, gore being hella censored. Adam vs. Zeus having the Adobe Premiere animation and much more other bullshit. They had a gold mine, an easy path to success in their hands, and they decided to waste it. If it wasn't for the great voice acting, the amazing OST, and the little upgrade in animation during round 3, this could have very well been one of the worst adaptations to ever exist. If it were not for the teaser at the end of the season, showing round 4, I would have thought that Netflix would have cancelled the anime. Speaking of round 4, with this being the next fight, everyone was on edge. It does not matter who you may ask, no matter of personal preference, if you ask anyone in the community which fight is objectively the best one so far, at least 95% would answer with round 4. With season 1 being less than stellar, hopes for Grafinica doing a good adaptation were woe. So, 2023 rolls around, season 2 gets released, and to their credit, it's a lot better than expected. Granted, it isn't exactly hard to upgrade when your previous work was dog shit, but that's neither here nor there. 
It still isn't anywhere near the quality that the record of Ragnarok deserves, but it most certainly has improved. Some people complained about the usage of CGI, especially when it came to Heracles, and to that I say, look I'm just happy that the characters even move this time around. As a whole, all three fights during season 2 were fine. And if they continue upgrading, season 3 might even reach the good tier of adaptations. But to be honest, the damage is already done. No matter how much the following seasons improve, the very first season is always the most important. And with Record of Ragnarok, that is 10 times the case, since Adam vs Zeus is there. It boggles me why a series all about fighting was given to a studio that specializes in not doing that. Honestly, I don't even know what Grafinica specializes in to begin with. It's sad that a fantastic manga such as this would never reach the popularity that it could have. Having a great anime is the key to a manga reaching its full potential. It's super rare to have a manga be extremely popular by itself, especially when it comes to shonen or fighting manga, with the only exception to my knowledge being Chainsaw Man. Still, the fact that Record of Ragnarok is an amazing series cannot change. I would recommend it to anyone, and with speeches this powerful there isn't a single person that cannot enjoy it. Who knows, you might even be able to find some enjoyment in the anime after finishing the manga due to its absurdity. Some people enjoy the series a bit too much though. Nah, just kidding. The community is awesome, one of the best I have been in. Anyways, here is my penis size tier list.